Now we're talking about medium foam tape. Let me jump to the soft tape first, and then I'll go back to the medium. When I had this large area, I needed a hard tape to impress it. If I use that hard tape on that little dot, I'm going to get the classic phenomenon that we recognize in Flexo, which is the halo around the image, right? That's the telltale sign of Flexo when you look at it with a loop. You have the impression, and then you have a halo around it, where what is happening is you have this dot, and as force is applied here, that dot deforms and it's like somebody's not going on that and his shoulders are framed. Okay? So now I have the image here and I have the classic flexo halo there. That's a, that's kind of a representation of that, right? So that's because plates, photopolymer plates are like water. They do not compress. Photopolymer, uh, the foam compresses because the air within it compresses. But the plate is like a fluid, like hydraulic. That's why we can use hydraulic brakes because, because it moves through the system, but it does not compress. Now, if you have ever, if any of you who are mechanically inclined, if you've ever gotten air in your brake line and you go to press the brakes, you will compress that air first and it will compress completely before it allows you to, and the fluid will not compress. The, the, the forces required to make fluids compress are not in the natural world. They are laboratory created or the center of the earth or something like that. The types of forces that compress fluids. So that photopolymer is not going to behave like a mounting tape <laughs> compress. It's going to displace. That's why we have that phenomenon. What a lovely thing. As a matter of fact, whoever invents a photopolymer place that's closed cell may be onto something. And if you guys do that, I, I got first dibs. <laughs> but so it does not compress. So we have to make up for that. That's why we use tapes of varying densities. They do the business for us of compressing so that now the photopolymer does not displace as much. Okay. So, but now the foam tape would not be good for the large solid as I explained. Now, I was just speaking to a gentleman a little while ago, and he was telling me about Frank. When I run half tones, no problem. When I run solids, no problem. But when I run solids and half tones together, it seems like my dots don't last and I get much fewer impressions, many fewer impressions than I do other, other, you know, when I don't have that combination. And while I, you know, I don't have the benefit of seeing the situation and making a hypothesis and testing it through it, testing it through well-designed trials to see if the hypothesis is correct, I'm going to take, well, I will form a a, a, a sort of hypothesis, a little thing that I would want to investigate, and that is, could it be possible that because I have that large image, my operator is impressing so he gets adequate pressure to fill the voids and I don't have that graininess, and as a result, my dots are being over-impressed, accelerating their wear. That would be an, er an area of investigation that I do, but here's another thing that, that gentleman might do, and that is go to perhaps some sort of a medium tape, okay? And do what we call combination printing. So you have a range, a spectrum of tape compression properties, and by understanding that, you know, greater surface area, we value greater pressure, smaller, all these things, you can try to dial in, depending on what your situ situation is, and do some troubleshooting to possibly resolve that situation, or at least arrive at an optimal or the best condition you could. Okay? So, many times when we do combination printing, it's a tape that will be uh, 
a little firmer than the very soft tape that we might use if we're doing strictly four color process on, or, or we have a half tone on this particular plane. Uh, the, the tapes that are used for four color process printing where, the, where you have just the, the, the dot images tend to be very soft and you would not ever be able to use it for a lot. So there's your, your range, your gamut of the tapes and, and uh, what they do for you in terms of printing different types of designs. Now, just like the photopolymer plate, if it didn't have the backing, just like the rubber plates of old that did not have the backing, if we didn't have a stabilizing film on one or more sides of this tape, then it would be pop. We might distort it as we're mounting it and possibly create values in it. So by having uh, a stabilizing film, and when we're mounting it on one or both sides, it allows us to not skew it and to not vary the thickness of that tape. But another thing it does is almost like a bridge, similar to when we spoke about using a, 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 allowing the cover sheet to remain on top of the raw photopolymer plate so that the foot of the, of the micrometer that they're using to measure does not create a depression. When you put a layer of stabilizing film, at least in this case, for, you know, there may be one here, and in this case, it's going to be between the plate and the mounted tape. When you have that there, anywhere you press, that, uh, that film distributes the load. It acts like a foundation. So the stabilizing film uh, provides uh, stability during mounting, and it also helps to distribute forces out rather than just compress that one spot in the mounting tape. Okay. Now, mounting tapes are also a system. Oh boy, here we go again. More parts, more parts. We're peeling the onion and we're getting more layers. Okay? Let's talk now about the adhesive layer that comes into contact with the cylinder slash sleeve, right? Um, mounting tapes have an orientation. You usually apply the same side or a specific side to the side to the cylinder, and the other side will adhere to the to the plate. Especially because the uh, tacks can vary. You can you can. Uh, the mounting tape has two layers, and you can have different tack levels, different aggression of the adhesion on those two layers. So, with respect to the adhesive layer that comes into contact with the cylinder, if you have a lower adhesion, tackiness to that lower adhesion, it's easier to remove after a, a run. And I'm sure that whoever it is to that, that's removing the plates and cleaning the cylinders is going to like that, right? So the people that take out the uh, mounting tape, they love a tape that has low adhesion. Okay? The, the operator is not affected, generally, if, it, if it's, if it's uh, low tack, unless it's so low that it contributes to it lifting off the cylinder during the run. Okay? Now, uh, if you have that issue, or another to, to avoid the problem of possibly the tape lifting off the cylinder, many times what we do is we mount the tape plate over the seam of the, uh, the mounting tape. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys a very quick way that since we're going to put a plate over that gap so that the mounting tape doesn't lift, there's a trick we can do to cut it to where that, that splice between that seam, the seam where the monotype comes together, is virtually 
It's almost perfect. Okay, so we want to do that now. Now, in the first place, let me illustrate that. We have our cylinder, we have our mounting tape, and what we try to do is instead of putting the plate, say like this, around that, and have the gap of the plate and the gap of the tape in the same place, allowing, which we can allow that to lift off, we're going to remedy that. Now think about it, a plate wants to be flat. That's the way it was created. That's the way it was exposed usually. It wants to be flat. So when we wrap it around the cylinder, it wants to pop up. So it's continuous, continuously applying force, upwards force, on the mounting tape as well, because the mounting tape is adhered to that place. So let's try to pull it up. So it's very easy when you mount that way for you to have a lifting pop. So it's very safe and simple the way we do that is we make sure that a portion of the plate is over that gap. Now I can't lift it. We may still have plate lifting issues, but it's not going to come off of the cylinder, generally speaking. Okay? Now, when we do that, we want to avoid as much as possible that there are any important elements in that area that might be impacted by that. If you have a half tone plate, I have actually taken a magic marker under very, very delicate conditions where we had really optimal running conditions. Take a half tone plate, take a magic marker, and write an S on the back of that plate, put that on the mounting table, and when we print it, you could see the dot gain, the excessive dot gain in those dots. We have a very, very well calibrated set of conditions. But if the film thickness of a magic marker can manifest in a discrepancy in dot size, so can a gap that is poorly made. So when possible, we bridge the gap. When we bridge the gap, when possible, we, all, we, we avoid important elements. And that, depending on your plate mounting workflow, flow, it can be easier or hard. For example, you may have register, register considerations or dry register considerations on non-servo, non-high-tech presses, and you figured out that if we always mount in a certain relationship, well, you know, we're gonna benefit. Then you have to think, in other words, the, a reference point on the plate relative to a reference point on the cylinder. You want to maintain that relationship. So if you don't want to violate that relationship, now you have to do a little bit additional work to try to locate that seam where it's going to, where the plate's relationship to the cylinder remains the same, but we locate that seam somewhere where it doesn't influence what we can. So the job gets a little bit more interesting for whoever does that, but it's manageable. 